Well, hello everyone! Glad to see you're here today to join me on my video. Today we're going to be doing something awesome and that is ranking the Batman actors to have portrayed Batman. So yes, from worst to best we're going to hit it from there. So I've got a few rules, mainly only movies and some TV movies count, but mainly theatrical run movies will be able to go. So. Some of the actors that I skip over won't be in video games or regular TV shows, so there are going to be some omitted from the list. However, let's get things started and let's start ranking this shit. Let's go! Batman portrayals from best to worst or worst to best or whatever the hell I said. Let's get things! Let's go! Let's roll it! Seven million. <laughs> Never leave the cave without him. You well, you knew the worst was going to have to be George fucking Clooney. And without a doubt, George Clooney is one of the worst people or worst actors to ever portray Batman. Why do I say that? It's not because the entire movie sucks, but it's because the entire movie sucks. No, seriously, the whole movie is shit. But I will give credit where credit's due. Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze costume actually looks kind of badass. I'm not going to lie on that one there. But however, George Clooney is really not giving much at all in this performance. He's just phoning it in. I mean, you could just tell by looking at the dude. And he makes Batman look happy. Why the hell does Batman look fucking happy here? I don't know. I don't like it. It's terrible. His delivery is off. Delivering lines like this is why Superman works alone is not a good fit for Batman. This is one of the worst portrayals of Batman that I have ever seen. And it's just really fucking disgusting to look at it. I mean, it's bad enough that the entire movie is ass, especially in this one, but George Clooney and fucking what's his name's actor that's playing Robin is not a good match here either. They have little to no chemistry. The entire involvement between Poison Ivy and him and Robin's love circle is just boring. The Mr. Freeze subplot is cool. I apologize for the pun. But other than that, this is easily the worst Batman I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen a lot of bad Batmans. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, it's more of a traditional thing where they're trying to mimic the Adam West themes of the original 60s show. Yeah, that worked in the 60s. This was a new audience. This was the 90s, everyone. We didn't want to see our Batman look like a fucking dork and deliver bad lines and actually give Batman little to no character. And on top of that, his Bruce Wayne is fucking terrible. I mean, he really looks like he gives no shits. I love Clooney as an actor. I loved him in things like South Park or Brother Where Art Thou, but... Batman was at the very bottom of the shit bucket. Now, now we're going to crawl through the top of the shit bucket with another Batman actor. Let's hit that one. There's number one crime fighter, Batman. Yes, Batman, clad in the somber costume which has struck terror to the... Now we have Lewis Wilson from the Batman serials. And I've got to say, I don't really have anything against the performance here. I mean, he was just doing what he was could do at the time. There's an entire anti-Japanese feel in this one because it was coming out in the 40s during World War II. So the movie kind of feels off, but his Batman, I know he's the very first Batman, technically, but it's awful. I mean, he's really trying to phone it in, and he doesn't really do anything different. Yeah, I could say that it's brand new and he's bringing Batman to the screen and it's supposed to be a completely different thing, but it's not really. But he does do better than George Clooney, I will give him that much. I've got to say, it's not the worst thing in the world. George Clooney is worthy of that champion belt, but I don't know. Maybe it's just because of the age of this short or the serial. I'm not sure. I just don't really like this one. I mean, I've seen a lot worse. Don't get me wrong, I've seen worse. Thank you, Clooney. But, mm, this is watchable. In fact, the other Batmans on this list are all really good choices. 
from this point on, we're going to be going into the order of the ones that I like, basically. We're pretty much out of the worst segment, so let's move on up. He'll grieve, but he will continue to be the best man I know. Oh no! Now we have Anson Mount, and call me old-fashioned, but his performance is really likable in my opinion. I enjoy this one quite a bit, honestly. I think the movie that he was in was really well done, and I think the voice acting was well done too. When it comes to animated Batmans, he's pretty darn good. I'm not gonna lie here, I mean, there are some moments where his voice can seem off at times, but it's not terrible, per se. I mean, there are moments where I think he sounds really like he's phoning it in, but is it awful? No, hell no. It's a long way from being awful, in my opinion, and as a voice performance goes, it's pretty darn good. I would really rank him up with another voice actor that is obviously going to be on the top tier of my list, but would I though? I know a lot of people are probably thinking he's really low on the list for me to be bragging him up, but yeah, like I said, this is just a perf preference now, perpetual stacking, I guess. And yeah, I would put his near more the bottom. I guess that's the only fair way. There are some scenes where he can sound too young to, sit, to play Bruce Wayne or Batman. I think my biggest problem with him is he doesn't capture Bruce Wayne that well. And it's not a terrible thing, but it does stand out a little bit. He definitely has the Batman thing down, but the Bruce Wayne, not so much. Anyhow, let's move on to the next choice. So it's a coin flip. Now we're up to Jensen Ackles. God, I hope I said that right. You know, I honestly hear a lot of people don't like his performance as Batman, and they always have it on the worst segments, but I really didn't see anything wrong or hear anything wrong with that. I think he was pretty good, and I think he did a much better job than Anson Mount did. He pretty much gives a more younger voice to Batman here, and I guess that's the idea they were going for. His voice is a lot more laid back than Anson's, and God, it sounds like I'm saying Ansem. Am I channeling Kingdom Hearts? I I'm sorry, everyone. I I'm getting off track. ADHD. Anyhow, he sounds a lot less experienced than Anson, but I think that's the idea behind it, especially in this movie. He does a pretty good job, but the weird thing is, for some reason, the Bruce Wayne design here reminds me of... Oh shit, what is that Adult Swim show's name? I, I don't know. It, it used to come on with Bojack Horseman. It's got the guy from Bob Burgers doing the voice. I don't remember the name of it. But the design looks like the designs from that show. And I just kind of laugh at it. It's mainly the designs that kind of puts this down, not the voice work. I do enjoy the voice work as Batman here. And honestly, I don't really have any complaints. Not any too minor, though I kind of don't like the setting in this one as much. I think the setting kind of throws me off just a little. It's not horrible, but it's not fantastic either. Howard, it's Bateman, Patrick Bateman. You're my lawyer, so I think you should know I've killed a lot of people. Some escort girls in an apartment uptown. Uh, some homeless people maybe five. I know what you're thinking. How dare you, Mr. Tim? How fucking dare you put Christian Bale so low on the list? Well, I guess I could say it out of live-action Batmans. Well, you know, besides Clooney and the guy from the serial, I don't like Bale that much. Now, I will say there are scenes that he could be intimidating, but if you compare him to other actors above on this list, it's not that much. And the Christopher Nolan films always want to take themselves super seriously. It's like a Nolan film with Batman attached on. That's all this movie's or this trilogy actually is. I don't really care about the Nolan trilogy that much. I will give credit where credit's due when they casted Heath Ledger as the Joker. That was awesome. Ra's al Ghul's casting was pretty good too. And the... Sandman? Nope, not the Sandman. I'm just kidding. The Scarecrow was actually really well casted too, but Batman himself has to be one of the biggest, most miscast actors in the world. 
And here's my problems with it. When he's Batman, he's got that deep, scary voice. When he's Bruce Wayne, I feel like I'm watching Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. In fact, I'm just waiting for him to take Katie Holmes' character or Maggie Gyllenhaal's character home with him and put a nail gun in their head. That's how much I see Patrick Bateman here. And I know Patrick Bateman was one of the biggest experiences or reasons why he got to play Batman in the first place. That's just my thoughts and opinion. I'm pretty sure that they based his Bruce Wayne off of Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. I don't know. I don't like his relationship with Alfred. The only actor that I really like his relationship with in this, besides the villains anyway, is either Harvey Dent or Morgan Freeman's Lucius Fox, who just does a bang-up job. Now, everyone's probably saying I'm slamming it, yet I put him higher than two voice performances that were good. Well, this is what it is here. The villains in the trilogy somewhat, but Bane, <clears throat> carry the movie well. And for Batman to interact off them, it works. When he's sharing the scenes with the villains, it works really well. But when he's not sharing the scene with the villains, oh dear god, it's awful. And he does that voice where it sounds like he has throat cancer. And like I said with Bruce Wayne, good lord, I feel like I'm watching American Psycho on rerun. Or it's just a lighter version of Patrick Bateman. Come on, put on Huey Lewis in the news. Let's go. Oh god, I just... Mm. But like I said... His elements in the movie are decent, and he does try to give it his all in this. I'm not going to completely defend him, but yeah, I'm going to just flat out say the villains, besides Bane, hold this movie up, and that's why his performance is just a few inches higher than you would think. Let's go on to the next one. No, that's just a TV show. Oh, shoot. You wouldn't believe what I spend on tailoring. Anyway, as I said, it's just a TV show. Blast! Hand me that shirt, would you? Thanks. However, Ben- Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Why Adam West above Christian Bale? He's campy, he's silly, he's stupid. Okay, before anyone decides to bash me for putting Adam West above Bale, you've got to remember, the dude was the... I don't know, the amazing Batman. I mean, he was one of the first Batman. Without him, we wouldn't have the Batmans that we have today. And honestly, he did have a great voice for the role. Yeah, this Batman is silly. He dances with drinks with the villains and goes surfing with the Joker. Tries to throw a bomb. But you know what? Nostalgia plays a huge part in this video, so it makes me biased, and I think he's a better Batman than Christian Bale could ever hope to be. He knew he couldn't be the greatest Batman ever because of censorship, and you couldn't have all that dark stuff in your Batman show. But I'm going to be talking about the movie here, so it counts because Batman the movie actually came out in the 60s or 70s. You have no idea how long it's been since I watched it, and Adam West does a pretty good job. I actually enjoy his performance as Batman and Bruce Wayne. He does pretty good at setting them apart. His chemistry with Robin is funny, and everyone's probably thinking, well, didn't you bitch about George Clooney uh, being too similar to Adam West, yada, yada, yada? You know what? It doesn't matter, because Adam West actually took the role seriously. And for this time and year for this to come out, it was just excellent. A lot of big Batman fans love it. A lot of the old school Batman fans love it like me. Hell, even James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd, actually puts this one up above his mantle because he thinks it's a great show and movie. And I do too. I mean, this is one of the very first Batman movies I ever watched as a kid and it still stuck with me for a long time. So I think the late but great Adam West is way more than worthy to have this spot on the list. Yeah, it's not anything where it's near the best. We still got a lot more to go here, but he is definitely worth a view here. Adam West kicks ass, and that's all I'm gonna say. Let's move on to the next one. Now we got this, Batman. 
even though I didn't much care for the movie in general, I did like David's performance, and I'm not going to lie on that one. It was a pretty damn good performance. I gotta say, I don't really care for that 70s hip-hop thing going on here, that 70s disco funk or whatever. But other than that, he's not a bad Batman. He did play the role really well, able to fluctuate between his voice, between Bruce Wayne and the actual Batman himself. And I've gotta say, I always give credit where credit's due. Even though I think this movie sucks the big one, this Batman was pretty damn awesome in my book. There's not much to him. He's not doing really anything different, but he does mesh really well with the other performances and the chemistry between the other characters and stuff really well work for him. All I've got to say is he's worthy to be Batman. I know this one's not very long, but yeah, that's all I'm going to say about him. But now someone stands in the shadows who knows my every move. Oh yeah. Now we're talking Under the Red Hood's Batman, and this one is really fucking good. That's all I gotta say. He does do something different. He tries to sort of start out by mimicking Kevin Conroy's style, but then he tries to keep it as his own, which I highly respect that. I like that he's not deepening his voice too much for Batman here, and honestly, this is just one of the best Batman movies ever. Under the Red Hood has to be one of the greatest Batman animated movies ever made in history. I do like his chemistry playing off Red Hood and the Joker in this one. And hell, I also already did a shout out about this one before in the past too. Citing that the voice of Bender was Joker at this point. They work well off one another, especially Batman. I think he is one of the better animated Batmans ever ever done here and I don't really say that lightly but is he the second best animated Batman done well not really there are other Batman actors that have the top tier spot as number two animated wise and this guy I would probably put him at number three animated wise he does something really good he captures the role of his own while trying to slightly mimic Kevin Conroy, but then making the role his own, like I just said. And he just really fits. He's a pretty good fit for Batman. I see him and welcome him in as a Batman voice actor. And honestly, I hope he comes back for more. Excalibur from the United Kingdom. I'm looking for him. I'm going to California. Actually, kind of broke a rule here. I was going to put, or at least omit, Troy Baker from being on the list because he had voiced Joker. But damn, he's actually a pretty good Batman. Now, keep in mind, he was in a animated movie. But I can only find footage of the video games to demonstrate his voice and stuff. However, it works really well, and I really like it. His voice is an excellent fit for the character, and I honestly enjoy him in this one rather well. Does he do anything groundbreaking, or is he mimicking? He's actually not mimicking like he did with Mark Hamill's Joker. He, no, no, no. He is actually going for and making... Batman a little bit stronger and more sympathetic than he was. Give it a shot again if you find that animated movie with him in it. I highly recommend it. It's worth at least one watch. His performance of Batman is just as good as his Joker performance, and I will stand by that one. Okay, well, I'm sure a lot of you guys are surprised that I have Val Kilmer up this high and above a lot of other actors. And I've got to say, personally, I think Val Kilmer nails this role as Batman, capturing some of the darkest live-action elements that he could do and portraying some of the really good lines. Val Kilmer is an excellent actor. Excellent at anything he does. He's one of my favorite actors of all time. I've heard rumors that he's hard to work with, but damn, did he really nail the role as Batman. 
In fact, I'm gonna go alongside and probably talk about V and Fuso's video where he's defending Batman forever. And I'm gonna agree with V. He's one of the best Batmans of all time. And I was kind of stunned how good he really was. Now there are some scenes where he could be a little silly and over the top. Like that bat smirk, I'm never gonna get over that shit. That shit was funny. He looks kind of like Goofy when he does that. <laughs> but still, that's the only thing that I have a problem with in this role. He really does capture a really great live action Batman. And I'm sure a lot of people were expecting him to be like right next to George Clooney or the black and white serial Batman, but no. I think he captures Batman and makes it his own role. Is he as good as the other ones that are above him on the list? Oh, hell no. But he does stand out, and it is unfortunate how underrated he is as Batman. I do like that there are shows that do a subtle little joke saying, Oh, wow, Val Kilmer, like Robot Chicken did with the Snoopy episode that, for some reason, parodied Misery? I, I don't know. Anyhow, he's so underrated as Batman, and he plays Batman so freaking well. I really just enjoy him on screen. Every minute he's on screen, he's kind of stealing the show and the scenery. Hell, that's a triumph if you could steal the show and the scenery underneath the Jekylling mess of fucking Two-Face in this and Jim Carrey's Riddler. That's a pretty good achievement in my eyes. So, yeah, I think Val Kilmer, I wish he could come back and play Batman again. I would love it, even if it's a voiceover. Even though I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon or probably never, I would still love to see it again. He was a pretty good Batman in my book, and quite possibly, this might be the very first Batman that I remember the most. Anyway, let's go on to the next role. Tell me. All right, now we have Ben Affleck, and I'm sure a lot of people are like, what the fuck? Why is he this high? I'm not gonna lie, when it comes to portraying Frank Miller's Batman, holy shit, he did awesome. And that's no lie here, he did really fucking awesome grabbing Frank Miller's Batman. I didn't think I was gonna like it. When this movie came out, Superman, uh, or Batman v Superman or whatever, I thought it was going to be complete and utter shit. Ben Affleck is Batman. I mean, come on. He already failed as Daredevil. Thank God I was only 80% wrong. The movie was complete shit. And the editing they used on Superman's mustache was fucking hilarious. But Ben Affleck is Batman? Shit, dude. That's fucking badass right there. That is amazing. I couldn't believe he was able to capture the tone to Batman perfectly. Well, almost perfectly anyway. There are still people above him, but I'm going to give credit where credit's due like I always do and just say he surprised me. He blew me out of the woods with this. It's just incredible. He's able to capture a more side to Batman, the more serious, worn, torn, and exhausted side to him. Like I said, with Frank Miller's Batman style, he was able to capture it. And he seriously redeemed himself from the Daredevil movie. Thank God. But when it comes to playing Batman, he just did excellent. And I've got to say, it's a shame that we won't be able to see him come back as Batman again. Because unlike a lot of the actors that are playing Batman nowadays, it kind of sucks now. But... Let's just keep on maneuvering with this one. He was great, and he deserves to play Batman again. I would honestly be happy if they recast him in a new Batman movie. I mean, it would make me so fucking happy. Because I didn't think I was ever going to enjoy Batman after Val Kilmer left. And I was proven wrong. Ben Affleck, you were able to finally fucking prove me wrong. You were an incredible Batman, and my hat goes off to you, sir. That's all I've got to say. Let's move on. Stay away. This is not your fight. Ah! This madness ends now. I know what you're thinking. Kevin Conroy is this 
He's not ranked as the best of the best. Oh, here comes the rioters! Okay, just listen. I love Kevin Conroy as Batman. To me, in animated voices, he will always be the definitive fucking Batman. I mean, the voice is perfect. Him being able to portray bro both Bruce Wayne and Batman perfectly to a T is excellent. One of my favorite moments that he does as Bruce Wayne is probably this line of dialogue right here. But, but it just doesn't hurt so bad anymore. You can understand that, can't you? Look, I can give money to the city. They can hire more cops. Let someone else take the risk. But it's different now. Please. I need it to be different now. I know I made a promise. But I didn't see this coming. I didn't count on being happy. That line of dialogue alone just shows how qualified and how incredible of an actor Kevin Conroy really is. How he's able to capture Batman just so perfectly and it being a voice performance alone is just enough to just raise the roof. I don't know how to say it anymore. What can be said about it? His role as Batman is cemented. When you open a comic book and you read, whose voice are you going to hear? You're going to hear Kevin Conroy's. He was perfect. And honestly, he still is. Because he still comes back and he still plays in the role so well. It's like his voice never aged either. He still sounds exactly the same as he did back in 1992. How the hell does that work? Either way it goes, he is one of the greatest voice actors for Batman. No, he is the greatest voice actor for Batman to ever portray him, to ever bring Batman to life. No matter how you look at it, he brought Batman to life with his vocals, and that took an incredible amount of work. He put so much emotion into playing Bruce Wayne, and the way he changes his voice going from a deeper scowlish voice into his hateful nature as Batman to intimidate criminals just works on a whole other level. And then he does it again playing Bruce as more of a playful, cheerful type. But then when he's able to get the emotional scenes between Bruce and Batman at the same time, he just nails it. Like the scene where he's at his parents' grave begging for them to be happy. When all in all his parents would just want him to be happy, they wouldn't want him out there risking his life. I've just got to say, no matter how you slice it, Kevin Conroy is worthy of this spot, and I'm not going to argue with everyone else. He is worthy of the spot that he gets on everyone's numbered list. He is Batman for so many people. Like, if he ever passed away, like Vian Fuso said in one of his videos, you have to put that on his tombstone. Kevin Conroy is Batman. He brought Batman to life for so many of us, made so many of our childhoods, and yeah, I am just brown nosing on a complete and utter degree here. I will always argue and say Kevin Conroy is one of the greatest Batmans to have ever been brought to us, but what slows it down is it's a voice performance. That's the only reason it's not number one, and if you one of the greatest voices for Batman isn't number one. Well, it's obvious now who the best is. And let's move on to it before you guys kill me. <laughs> Go ahead. Make my millennium. <laughs> and my favorite Batman, to me the best, is Michael fucking Keaton. No matter how you slice it, Michael Keaton is the greatest Batman of all time. When Tim Burton was directing to make the Batman 1989 and Batman Returns movie, he wanted to bring Batman and turn him from a goofy, joyous, clumsy character to an amazing, dark, kick-ass character. And why not get the voice, I mean not the voice actor, but the actor from Beetlejuice who's known for dark and diversity 
to play Batman. And I've got to say, it's just perfect. Michael Keaton, to me, is Batman in so many ways. He captures not only Batman, but he captures Bruce Wayne well, too. As Batman, he's dark, mysterious, and intimidating, and he doesn't talk all that much, which I think adds more to the mystery of Batman. In fact, the smirk that he does when he's fighting criminals or whatever, that is something only Keaton could pull off. I mean, Val Kilmer tried, and it looked like Goofy smirking. And then when he's Bruce Wayne, he's sly and unassuming. He looks like a regular person, and you could never tell that this guy went through something. You see, the deal with all the other Batmans on the list, like Christian Bale, Ben Affleck, and etc., when they're in their Bruce Wayne form, or Bruce Wayne look, you know, without the Batman mask on, you could see that the character Bruce Wayne has went through something, something traumatic, something that has destroyed him. Keaton plays him off like a regular person, being able to just see like, oh yeah, well, that's cool, he's an everyday Joe. And that is just so much more effective than just playing somebody you could tell that's hurting or that's in pain. Not that Ben Affleck or any of the other actors did a bad job with that, but being able to capture Bruce Wayne and Batman together is an impossible task. And only two people on this list have done that. That's Kevin Conroy and Michael Keaton. Keaton is just able to give so much personality to Batman too. And he, yeah, he doesn't do a deep, scary voice, but he does make his voice more, I don't know, deeper slightly, but intimidating at the same time. I mean, he just steals the entire movie. He is fascinating. In fact, the 89 Batman is just great. And I like that they focus in the 89 and Batman Returns on the villains because we want to know more about Batman and it's trying to keep building Batman to a mystery. I think that's geniusly shot and geniusly written. Keep the main hero as a mystery. They did that again in Batman Returns. When they didn't focus the shift on Bruce Wayne as much or Batman as much, just having them in a few scenes adding more layers to the villains, it also adds a mysterious layer to Batman slash Bruce Wayne, and only Michael Keaton can really pull that off. I know everyone is going to disagree with me, you all have your favorite Batman, but to me, Michael Keaton embodied the role and he became Batman, and always in my opinion, he will always be my Batman. And that's the end of this list. Well, that does it for this list. I finally finished this video, and it was a hard video to make, everyone, but it was really uh, on a lasting edge of putting Ke Keaton as number one or Conroy as number one, and honestly, I had to go with Keaton at the very end. But who's your favorite Batman? Tell me in the comments. Is there any more Batman characters you want me to go through? Always remember, I'm listening.